This is the moon, as no man had ever seen it before. A rugged place of craters, mountains, and vast featureless plains. 70 miles above this uninviting, yet so sought after world, astronauts Frank Borman, James Lovell, and William Anders orbited in Apollo 8, looking coolly down on a scene they factually described as like plaster of Paris. For almost seven days, the three moon travelers were away from Mother Earth, voyaging half a million miles into the unknown and back. Incredibly, after that fantastic journey, the Apollo spaceship splashed down little more than three miles from its target. A bullseye, and what an achievement. It had brought safely home the men who, from now, rank with Columbus and all the other great explorers of history. The names of Borman, Lovell and Anders have secured a worthy place in the halls of fame. Along the red carpeted deck of the United States carrier Yorktown, the astronauts walked, modest men, perhaps a little overawed by the tremendous greeting they were afforded. The world, their world, joined the carrier's crew and the scores of excited pressmen on board to welcome them home. This was their part of the greatest adventure of science, a hero's homecoming. But for thousands of others too, these were moments of the greatest achievement. Scientists, engineers, technicians, the men and women who had taken a dream and turned it into the successful reality of a moonship. For them also, this was a time of greatness. This was the proof of their achievement. The space capsule, all that remained of the giant rocket which a week earlier had thrust itself away from its pad at Cape Kennedy and torn free of the Earth to take the first men to the moon. 12 feet tall and less than 13 feet across its base, yet crammed with instruments and devices which are themselves the very boundaries of scientific knowledge at this time. This marvel of science had withstood all that the unknown could inflict upon it. A journey further and faster than ever before into deep space and back to the searing 24,000 mile an hour re-entry. It had protected its three passengers from heat a quarter of that of the sun as it plummeted back through the atmosphere, scorched, but very much in one piece. Those thousands who had built it, launched it and helped bring it back home again had every reason to be proud. Apollo 8 had proved itself. The forerunner of other ships which will go to the moon was towed away. Scientists will probe every inch of it to learn and to improve. For Borman, Lovell and Anders, the greatest honors. President Johnson said what all of us feel. We rejoice that you are well and we send you congratulations from all of your fellow countrymen and from uh, all uh, peace-loving people in the world. Well done.